Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Join today and become an honorary producer and get in-show credit on every episode. Welcome to Off The Cuff. I'm Craig Mitchell. I am really excited about today's show. I know. I know. I say that about every show, but this time it's really, really true. Okay, it's always true. Today, I'm making a favorite. Yeah. And to further exemplify why I call this show Off The Cuff, this is a food that I've never made before. Well, it's not that dramatic. Today's food I've only had is takeout and at restaurants, and I love it. But truth be known, it's really not that hard to make, it isn't. Yeah, today I'm making low-carb, barbecued, baby back ribs. Yeah! And I know what you're thinking. That's not high-carb. It's not, but the sauce can be. So I'm going to make a very low-carb, homemade barbecue sauce and rub. And to put my own personal stamp on it further, I'm gonna cook these ribs in the air fryer. It's going to come out amazing. Now, you may prefer, you know, barbecued, putting it on the grill, but I think the air fryer is gonna give the barbecue a run for its money. And what goes with barbecued ribs? Well, there's a lot of things. So I thought about it. Actually, I didn't think about it. I looked, <laughs> I looked it up online. And one of the favorite side dishes with barbecued ribs is cornbread. I'm going to demonstrate a recipe for low carb, delicious cornbread. And I have to admit, I've had this before. I just had to try it. You're not going to believe it. It tastes just like real cornbread, even though it's made with almond flour. This is going to be great. Now, in our first segment today, we have a very, very special guest. I mean, this guest goes way back. I mean, way back. And I think I can comfortably say this man was one of the first people ever to order ribs. Oh, yeah. Watch. Good evening. I'm Clip R. Mantle, and this is Where Are They Now? The show that looks back into the history of pop culture, interviewing icons, idols, authors, and tonight's special guest. He first leapt into the public eye on the evening of September 30th, 1960, and he's never left since. 166 episodes in 80 countries and 22 languages, everybody knows his catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, but that would do! That's right. Tonight on Where Are They Now? We talk to the patriarch of that modern Stone Age family, Fred Flintstone. Mr. Flintstone, Fred, may I call you Fred? Hey, you can call me Fred as long as you don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> How have you been? What are you up to? Well, I'm up to about 300 pounds. Oh wait, this is bedrock. 300 stones. Actually, I'm just fine. So, are you still sliding down that dinosaur's tail when you hear the whistle at 5 o'clock? No, I retired from the quarry about four years ago. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you'd be running the quarry by now. Yeah, you and me both, but Slate sold everything and invested in this kryptonite, crypt, crypt keeper. Oh, cryptocurrency. Yeah, that's it. I, I always thought crypto was Superman's dog. <laughs> well, speaking of dogs, how's Dino? Ah, uh, Dino. I used to really hate it when he'd run at me and jump at me when I walked through the door, but uh, I really miss it now. There he is, there's Dino. Ah, oh, crossed over the Rainbow Bridge. Oh no, Dino is far from a fossil. He gained weight, worked out, got signed by a Hollywood agent, and look at him now! He's Barney the Dinosaur. Yeah, can you believe it? I love you, you love me, the kids love him, I find <laughs> annoying. Yeah. Well, speaking of yeah, Barney... Yeah, Barney moved to Detroit Rock City. Wilma's visiting him and Betty there right now. I know. <laughs> we have him on the phone with us. 
Oh. Hello, Mr. Rubble. Hey, Mr. Metal. Hey, Fred. <laughs> hey, Bon, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'd put Wilma on the phone, but she's out shopping with Betty. Uh-oh. I can hear the battle cry now. Charge it! Hey, hey Fred, <laughs> I'd love to stay, but Bam Bam's taping the show tonight, and I don't want to be late. Oh, Bam Bam is on TV. Yep, he's a TV chef. He's got a gimmick no one will steal. Yeah, get this. He adds ingredients by going, Bam! Bam! <laughs> oh, that's just like Emerald. Emerald? Emerald who? Never mind. You know, I would have thought that with his strength, Bam Bam would have been a wrestler or superhero or something. Well... Well, you see, uh, remember when we were all taking those Flintstone vitamins? Of course. Yeah, well, he was taking steroids. Oh. Gotcha. Well, gotta go, pal of mine. See ya! Take care, Bon! <laughs> well, Fred, we're almost out of time, but before we go, we have some questions from the viewers, if you don't mind. Oh, I'd love to hear them. Okay, the first one is from Ann Rothney. They want to know, why does everybody in Bedrock only have three toes on each foot? And let me tell you, you try stopping your car at 70 miles an hour in your bare feet. Let's see how many tootsies you have left, okay? Point taken. The next is from Mickey Delaney, and they want to know, whatever happened to the Great Gazoo? Mickey, that's a great question. We just don't know. One day he was flying over Nevada Rock, you know, somewhere near Area 51, and then poof, we never saw him again. He's gone. Interesting. Yeah. And finally, I have a question of my own, if I may. Okay, shoot. At the end of each episode, you order the Brontosaurus ribs. Ooh, I love Brontosaurus ribs. Well, my question is, why do you order them? If you know, they'll tip over your car. Well, that wasn't a problem before Wilma turned vegan. The car was balanced. Now I just get it and we turn over, everything spills, it's a mess. <sighs> Understandable. Happy wife, happy life. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Words that, sadly, I've ignored. Uh oh but That brings us to the ribs. Yeah. Which are on the menu tonight. Mm -mm. And here are the ingredients. Yabba-dabba-doo! Okay then, let's get started with these ribs. First up, the low-carb barbecue sauce. One third of a cup of sugar-free ketchup. One tablespoon each of Worcestershire sauce, coconut aminos, liquid smoke, apple cider vinegar, and minced garlic. One half teaspoon salt. One half teaspoon black pepper. One teaspoon each of onion powder and sweetener. The sweetener is optional. And one tablespoon of hot sauce or to taste. Now for the ribs and the rub. First up the ribs. You need one rack of baby back ribs. Now for the rub. Two tablespoons chili powder. One tablespoon garlic powder. One half teaspoon cayenne pepper. One tablespoon paprika and one quarter teaspoon of cumin. And finally, for the low carb cornbread, five cups of almond flour, one tablespoon baking powder, one third of a cup of sweetener, one teaspoon sea salt, two thirds of a cup of butter, softened, two thirds of a cup of unsweetened almond milk, six large eggs, and one tablespoon of corn extract. So as a little change of pace, I'm gonna make our side dish first, the cornbread. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because, well, with the ribs, if I make them and they're nice and hot, it's gonna take like 40 minutes to do the cornbread, and I wanna eat the ribs while they're warm. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you? Absolutely, so let's make the cornbread. Oh, one more thing before we start. Just to let you know, I halved the recipe for the cornbread, because I, I don't want that much. Uh, the full recipe was in the ingredients, you can use that or you can half it, whatever you want. Uh, I'll give you the full cook times though, so you know how long to cook the full recipe. Okay, now I said the barbecue baby back ribs are easy. So is the cornbread. Here's your almond flour. The baking powder. All the baking powder. This is your sweetener. I'm using allulose and monk fruit. A little bit of salt. 
Now we want to mix it up thoroughly. Like I said, this is not going to take a long time. You want to make sure that your dry ingredients are well mixed before you enter the wet ones. Here comes the unsweetened almond milk, the egg, and the butter. Okay, now we mix it into a batter. Whoops, I forgot one thing. The concentrated corn flavor. There you go. We want this to taste like cornbread. It's like I was saying, yeah, this is very, very, very easy. Just gonna make sure it's all mixed well together. Now the oven is preheated to 400 degrees, so don't forget that. Here's the pan I'm going to make it in. Now you can butter this, or like me, you can spray it either way. Sometimes if you put butter in here and you leave it in a little bit too long, the bottom can burn. So we don't want that, okay? Now we take this and we just put it in. Alrighty. Here we go. Now, if you were making the full recipe, it would be, it would fill this whole pan. Like I said, I'm doing half and that's just fine with me. Now we take our mixture into our oven, which is preheated to 400. Now, if you're making the full recipe, 35 to 40 minutes or until it's golden brown. For me, it's gonna be like 15 to 18. Either way, it's gonna be tasty. Okay, it's been 18 minutes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at this. Look, 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 look. Oh, yeah. Talk about golden brown. Tell me that doesn't look like cornbread, really. Oh boy. So we're gonna let this cool and we're gonna make our ribs. Hey, but first, let's take a look at food facts. Now we consume ribs from many different animals. Pork, beef, lamb, venison. Actually, there's a lot more, too many to mention. Either way, if you're served five or more ribs, that's considered a rack. Oh man, it's gonna be one of those shows. Now, the typical rack, right, yes, can have 15 or 16 ribs on it, depending on the size of the pig. Now, as for the ribs, they can vary between three and six inches long. Pork ribs are popular in Western and Asian cuisines. Now, they're usually prepared with or without sauce or glaze, and they're either smoked, grilled, or baked. Or in my case, air fried. Oh yeah. There are several different types of ribs. There are spare ribs, short ribs, rib tips, or riblets. Butchers create riblets by taking spare ribs and cutting them in half. This produces a set of short, flat ribs. Now, this used to be a waste product, but now it's really, really popular. Baby back ribs are shorter and have more meat on them than spare ribs. Also, the rack is usually tapered. That means it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. I used to be that way too. Barbecue ribs rose in popularity in the early 20th century. Community uses to host large events where local farmers would bring several pigs and they would cook them over a spit over large barbecue pits and have a mass feast. Barbecuing just the ribs didn't become a thing until refined meat packing and refrigeration came along. Before that, there was no way to save the different cuts of meat, so that's why they cooked the entire animal on a spit all at once. The idea of barbecued ribs probably originated in the Caribbean. From there, it was shared with Spanish conquistadors, such a fun word to say and then to North America, where European settlers added their spices and their seasoning. Is anybody else getting hungry? Today, barbecue is everywhere, but before it became commercialized, it was the highlight of special events, like communal 4th of July celebrations or political rallies. With the coming of the 20th century came urbanization. Slow cooked meats and smoked barbecue were sold in the streets and also in courthouse squares, usually under tents or in temporary sheds. As they got more popular, they moved into permanent establishments. 
In just a matter of years, barbecue ribs can be found anywhere in the country at barbecue stands, cafes, butcher shops, just about anywhere that had a barbecue pit and smoked meats. In the 1920s, A.R. Hubbard's Cafe in Houston was one of the first places to offer barbecued ribs alongside dinners and short orders. Meanwhile, in Greensboro, North Carolina, Clegg's Hotel and Cafe were offering barbecued spare ribs with sweet potatoes. I'm doing baby back ribs with cornbread. At Rasmussen's in Davenport, Iowa, they had a Sunday special. Tennessee-style barbecued ribs for just 75 cents. That would be $10.50 today. Still a bargain. In Memphis, John Mills opened a barbecue stand on 4th Street, which became really popular with all the late-night people who are hanging out in the Beale Street Party District. Even some celebrities. Two of them were Kate Smith and Bing Crosby. ba 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 in the 1930s, barbecue ribs could be found in thousands of barbecue stands, nightclubs, and cafes all across the United States. But then, after World War II, well, barbecue ribs got elevated to the finer restaurants and became a staple on their menus. In the post-war 1950s, home barbecuing was all the rage and barbecued ribs weren't far behind. But they weren't cheap. Ribs were a high-ticket item. Yeah. Which is kind of odd because just a hundred years before, meat packers couldn't give it away. And now it's time for rib trivia. There are four types of pork ribs. There's St. Louis style, country style, spare ribs, and of course, baby back. The south side of Chicago is famous for its rib tips. That's my Chicago accent. In Texas, where everything is bigger and beef is king, Pork ribs are huge, yeah. They're part of the Texas Trinity, which includes brisket and sausage. Yeah. The Bambino. Babe Ruth himself was a huge fan of ribs. To celebrate the New York Yankees sweeping the St. Louis Cardinals in the 1928 World Series, he treated his teammates to 50 pounds of spare ribs. Whoa, yeah, he did everything big. The world's longest barbecue was actually 80 hours. It was in South Africa in 2014, hosted by Jan Greff, and it was for juvenile diabetes research. And finally, the original style rib was probably mammoth. <laughs> yeah, those be some big ribs. Hey, you know what? Fred Flintstone was on to something. I thought he just used a mammoth for his shower. And that's Food Facts. Here is our baby back ribs. Or should I say here are? Yeah, here are our baby back ribs. This is the top side, yep. Now on the bottom, we have this. This is a membrane. And a lot of people get freaked out by that name, but membrane is just a, a means a thin layer of animal tissue, which actually covers an organ or it, uh, it's connective. Okay, that's still disgusting. Anyway, we're gonna take this off. And I've been told that it's possible to take this off in one sheet. I've never done this before. I'm using my paring knife to get started. This could end up being a disaster of unparalleled portions. Well, but it takes patience, just like anything else. Here we go. There we go. I have just some. Rem I just have some remnants of the membrane. Insane in the membrane. Okay. I'm gonna throw these out because they are disgusting. And yes, <laughs> my ribs have been demembraned. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into thirds. Right here will be one cut. And here is yeah, the other cut. Will be another cut. Okay. All right, so we have our, these are our spare ribs. We're going to keep them like this. And we're going to slide them over here because now we're going to make our rub. Okay, I had to dry my hands real well, wash them and dry them. Now let's make the rub. Here is the chili powder. 
the cayenne pepper. No, actually, yep, yep. It, I don't know what that is. Oh, this is the paprika. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah, this is the cayenne pepper. We're not using a tablespoon of that. Okay. This is the onion powder. And this is the smallest amount, the cumin, in the biggest bowl because I'm fancy. Now, we mix it up. You can sprinkle a little bit in each one. Save some for the back. We're going to do both sides. Oh, yeah. Rub it like you mean it. This is where we took off the membrane. Insane in the membrane. All right. Rub that in. Rub it in. Rub. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you do when you're doing this, don't go to your eyes. That would not be advisable. All right. Now we're going to wrap them up for the air fryer. You don't have to wrap them too tight. Just make sure they're covered. Insane and the membrane. Now that song is in my head for the rest of my life. It's off to the air fryer. Okay. Now we put them into the air fryer. They can lay on top of each other. It's okay. It's convection. And they're going to be here for 25 minutes at 380 degrees. Now let's make that sauce while this is cooking. Here is the one third cup of no sugar ketchup. Next we have our coconut aminos. Oh, Worcestershire sauce. I can never pronounce that right. Let's stir that up a little here. Worcestershire, Westchester, Wist. You know what sauce I mean. It's made from anchovies. Apple cider vinegar in. Uh, what exactly is this? Oh, this is, um, this coconut tomatoes. <laughs> I can't remember what this is. I'll figure it out. I'll come back to it. Uh, <laughs> this is the garlic, the minced garlic. It's coconut aminos, Worcestershire sauce, and something else that's brown. Uh, oh, God. The liquid smoke. That's what it is. The liquid smoke. What am I doing? Okay. Oh, I'm okay, guys. Don't worry. Here is the salt, pepper, and onion powder. Okay. <laughs> and this is optional. Hot sauce. I love hot sauce in barbecue. In it goes. Use your favorite one. Don't use it at all. It's all up to you. Here is the barbecue sauce. Now we gotta wait for the ribs to be ready. We're gonna take them out of here. They're red hot. And they're gonna, actually the foil isn't hot. The heat was transferred to the meat. We slather them with the sauce we just made. This is gonna go back in the air fryer for 10 minutes. I want to eat them now. Okay, 10 minutes is up. <gasps> what do you think? Get to the real. I got real. <laughs> nice and tonight. Nice and tonight. Nice and tonight. You can take barbecued baby back ribs off my bucket list. I did it. I can't hold this for. A, I'm. A, <laughs> It was real easy to do. I mean, you saw how simple. And you know, with the air fryer, it's very neat and clean. Uh, there's no barbecues to clean. It, it's, it's all really good. Of course, if you prefer to barbecue them, well, absolutely. I mean, they're good for a reason. They're ribs, they're always good. And as for the cornbread, I cannot believe how good that turns out. I just cannot believe it. Uh, anyway. I'm gonna test the corn. I'm gonna taste the cornbread first, as you see here. I've already had it before, but um, I had this slathered with butter. It's enough butter to stop a clock, but whatever. Let's taste it. <laughs> see this face? This face cannot believe 
that that is not made out of corn flour, cornmeal. This is almond flour. This is amazing. I defy you to tell the difference. It is so good. Having that in the morning with a cup of coffee also, really good, really nice. Now it's time to taste the first rib I ever made. This look, look, look how amazing that looks. Oh boy, I can't wait. Here we go. It's juicy, it's spicy, it's tangy, oh. It's messy. Mm. This is so good. Oh, it's so tender. Mmm. The sauce really comes through. Mmm. You get the flavor of the sauce all in here. A little bit of heat on the tongue. This is absolutely perfect. Ah. I'm gonna eat them all. I am, right now. Well, maybe not right now, but. Mmm, that is wonderful. And that's it for this week. I'm here again in two weeks with another recipe. And remember, until then, be well, eat good. On the next episode of Off the Cuff, we get down and dirty. Today's show is going to be a lot of fun, but you better put your aprons on. I'm making Sloppy Joes with a homemade low-carb bun. Next, my special guest isn't exactly shy. Well, no, this is a cooking show, and I was actually talking about food. Is this live, or is it memory? No, 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 no. In Food Facts, we learned that even the experts agree that Sloppy Joe has arrived. The Sloppy Joe is a product of the modern age. It's a delicious, low-carb Sloppy Joe. Try this. This was great. All on the next Off the Cuff Healthy Cooking with Craig Mitchell. Alternate Sundays at 7.30, right here on Strong 